overwhelmingly be filled with this particular uh, uh, webinar. And uh, those who can't join, and you please tell us, tell them to join on the YouTube. Already the YouTube link has been shared. And today's uh, the flow of uh, session is more on question and answers because we don't want to get into the uh, detailed uh, presentation on uh, the invoicing and all that. However, I would like to, the program of the session will be like uh, the, in the beginning, deep in Agendra Kumar, sir, member CBAC, New Delhi will go into inaugural, inaugural uh, give address to this particular webinar. Later, uh, the NIC uh, Karnataka, the NIC team, they'll uh, present a question and answers PPT for uh, uh, one, five, five, 10 minutes. And later on, whatever the questions have been asked in the chat box, it will be answered and every question will be answered to the best of our knowledge and ability. And uh, looking at the participants, we can make it out very clearly that already most of the uh, taxpayers and consultants are aware of uh, this particular uh, invoicing, uh, what actually been rolled out from 1 for 2022 for 20 and above. And it is already in uh, place from 1 for uh, 110 2020 with reference to this uh, 500 crore and above. And more than 150 crores of invoices have been generated. Now, I'll request uh, DP Anandra Kumar. Everyone uh, is aware of uh, who is Dr. Uh, who is DP Anandra Kumar, sir. He's a CBAC uh, member. He was earlier principal chief commissioner of Bangalore and yes. he's well versed uh, with the uh, policy and he's in the uh, policy making uh, wing. And right now, he is a member of uh, CBAC. Sir will take uh, take over and he'll give an inaugural speech uh, for 10, 5, 10 minutes. Later on, get to the question and answer session. Go to deep in Agenda Kumar's Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm indeed uh, 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 glad and uh, happy to note, I think uh, this seminar is being organized today in the Q&A format. Uh, primarily intended for uh, clarifying the doubts and the issues and concerns faced by the taxpayers insofar as adopting to this invoice uh, 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 application is concerned. Uh, this is a series of webinars which have been organized uh, uh, in close coordination uh, with the Commercial Tax Department of Karnataka. Uh, uh, by NIC uh, and of course uh, uh, associating with uh, various stakeholders including uh, the taxpayers and also the tax departmental officials. Uh, today's session uh, would be uh, uh, a panel of speakers today in uh, the, the panel of uh, the panelists will be responding to your queries would include uh, Mr. Bhatt, uh, Mr. Dr. B. Murli Krishna and his team. And of course, Mr. Butts uh, technical team will also will be available. Uh, Ms. Uh, Sunita Benur and Ms. Suresh Meti and others. And on behalf of the CBIC side, I'll be available along with my team members. And also from the GSTN side, I requested uh, Senior Vice President uh, uh, Mr. Rastogi to join the webinar today. So that I think uh, with regard to the various concerns and issues which may have some bearing on either the application or on the process, uh, we would like to hear those questions and see what best we can do in terms of clarifying the doubts. And wherever the doubts are not clarified, uh, please be rest assured that some of them would require a deep delving into the issue, be it on the law and procedures or in the technical aspect of it. We would def definitely look up uh, for uh, resolving yeah, those issues yeah. uh, yeah. when yeah. consultation with appropriate stakeholders. Uh, I would request uh, all the participants kindly mute your mic. And, uh, the questions are there. Uh, you can just put it on the chat box. And I also request uh, the organizers, I think they can mute everybody so that there is no disturbance during the webinar and that the queries, queries are being properly heard and uh, they are responded to by the panelists. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Murli Krishna, for uh, organizing this wonderful program. And I see already thousands has crossed in terms of the participants across the country. And I'm sure, I think, as he mentioned, the YouTube link will give uh, a further follow up others who will not join the WebEx link as of now because of the uh, capacity being completely exhausted. Okay, thank you. Over to you, Mr. Burling Krishna. Look forward to your very interactive and interesting uh, discussions with the stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the inaugural address, sir. And now I request uh, the uh, NIC team, uh, Suresh Meti, uh, Senior Technical Director, to give uh, a presentation and question and answers. And I request all the participants to keenly look at the particular question and answers of PowerPoint session. 
and most of the questions whatever you are raising in the chat box it will be answered in this particular and remaining anything in uh, general it will be collated and uh, it will be answered by the panel uh, dp nagendra kumar sir and other cbse panel members and also nic uh, team headed by pb uh, but uh, sio ddg and uh, now it's over to mr suresh uh, meeti log your presentation question answers okay, uh, just one minute i'm going to open Uh, thank you, uh, Murul Krishna sir. Uh, very good morning to uh, all the participants. So we are uh, now briefly running through. Uh, 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 of course, some of these questions were already uh, discussed in our earlier uh, webinars, and uh, we have added some more questions to this uh, set of questions which were asked during the last uh, webinars. So it is an enhanced. Uh, a frequently asked question now, and uh, as uh, Murli Krishna said, most of your queries can be answered uh, through this. Uh, you can ask uh, questions. If you have any other questions, then you can raise uh, your questions in the chat box. Uh, please don't repeat the questions. Uh, I mean, uh, don't copy and paste the same questions again and again. We will be going in the order, and we will pick up the questions and answer from this presentation as well. Uh, so we'll start with uh, a basic question like uh, how do i know whether i am supposed to register in of course Suresh. those who are already eligible they have started Suresh. just hold on for a minute using Suresh. the e invoice and register Suresh. the irs sorry 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 in case you want to check whether you are uh, supposed to generate the irns then you can go to the portal uh, e invoice one dot gst dot go dot in and uh, in the menu you can go to search and under that there is an option for that. Suresh, here you can enter your GST. Okay. Uh, and just a minute, the question answer will be continued. Just just a moment. and under that e invoice status of taxpayer option is available there you can enter your gstn and get to know whether you are eligible for the e invoicing so here there is a when uh, you go to this site and choose the option here by entering the gstin uh, you will be able to know whether whether you are eligible for uh, invoicing or not the next question is which turnover is considered for eligibility of taxpayer for registering the invoices so if the taxpayer has crossed the minimum threshold as specified by government through notification in the year since gst came into so as of now uh, the taxpayers with turnover more than 20 crores are supposed to register their invoices and get the irn and uh, as you are aware, like this has been implemented in phased manner. Initially started with 500 crore and above, and then uh, extended to 100 crore and above, then 50 crore and above, and now it has been extended to 20 crore and above. Here for turnover, all the turnovers are considered. Uh, all the turnovers put together are a pan. If it is exceeding 20 crores, then such taxpayers are supposed to uh, register their invoices. Uh, from 1st April 2022. My turnover is more than 20 crores. Uh, Suresh, my status Suresh. shows I am not eligible for e invoice. How can I Suresh. enable myself? Suresh. So this criteria is basically uh, decided based on the, uh, the turnovers. I request all of you to mute your mic. Disturbance is there. 
But sir, you wanted to say something? No, mute, muting has not happened. Some disturbance is there. Uh, I think some uh, users might have joined through phone, sir, uh, uh, over the call. They are not getting uh, uh, muted. But disturbance is more, so they are, people are not able to hear. Okay, sir, once. Jacob, once again, you lock. Those who have joined through a uh, telephone call, uh, please uh, mute your uh, mic or maybe you can join through the URL. Okay, thank you, Mr. So, uh, the another question that is asked is like my turnover is more than 20 crore, but my status shows I am not eligible for a invoice. How can I enable myself? So basically, the, uh, uh, whether a taxpayer is enabled for a invoice or not is based on the uh, returns filed by them in the earlier financial years. So it means they have crossed the threshold that was uh, notified by the government, uh, but still they are not in the list then uh, there is an option for them to enable themselves. So such taxpayers who know that they have crossed this threshold as uh, notified by the government, they can visit the website uh, eenvice1.gst.gov.in. There in the menu, there is an option called as registration and under that, there is an option eenvice enablement. So using this option, the, the taxpayer can uh, enter the required details and uh, enable themselves for registration. These are the screenshots of this option. By entering the GSTIN, uh, they will be shown their basic details. And, uh, by entering the OTP, they will be enabled to uh, make themselves uh, eligible for invoicing. For this, they have to select the year during which they have crossed the threshold and enter the, their uh, turnover for the respective financial year. After this, they are enabled for e invoicing, and then they can go to uh, the registration option and register themselves for uh, registering the invoices. Is e invoicing voluntary? That is, can entities with aggregate turnover less than 20 crores load to generate e invoices from IRP if they wish to do so? No, the uh, registration of invoices is not voluntary. So only those who are uh, eligible as per the government notification only are supposed to register their invoices. I am one of IST, SEZ, TDS or UNI. Am I supposed to register my invoices on IRP? No. Uh, these type of registrations are not supposed to register their invoices. My turnover is less than the threshold announced by government or my business type is accepted for the invoice. But the portal shows my business is enabled for a invoice. How can I get it disabled? So as I was mentioning, it is basically uh, uh, enabled on the portal based on the... Madam, can you please mute, uh, mute your mic? Uh, the eligibility status on portal is based on the returns data of the past years. If your business is not supposed to register, you may raise the grievance at the GST common portal. So next question is, what about the petrol pump having turnover more than 20 crores, which includes some GST supplies? And similar question also is uh, frequently asked, that is, taxpayer need to generate e-invoice. If he has 90% non-GST supplies with B2, and B2C invoices and 10% GST liable supplies with B2C. So here, all the turnovers, that is taxable, nil, exempted, non-GST, all are considered for um, seeing whether the taxpayer is eligible for e invoice. So, uh, in these cases also they may be shown as uh, eligible for uh, raising the uh, e invoices. 
but only the gst supplies that too of b2b b2c and export uh, are supposed to be registered on the portal if supply value is less than 50000 since it doesn't require revable should we still register such invoice for a invoicing yes that the limit of 50000 or whatever each state has specified that is applicable only for the evable but as far as e invoice is concerned all the invoices irrespective of the value of the invoice uh, have to be registered provided they are b2b b2g or export invoices if the recipient rejects the service or goods whether irn to be generated if the rejection of the service or the goods is within 24 hours the irn can be cancelled if it is beyond 24 hours uh, in case of rejection of service then as in the practice whatever is being done so far that is either through a credit note or debit note uh, the adjustment needs to be done and these credit note and debit notes are supposed to be registered on the portal and in case uh, the uh, return of goods uh, is involved then a del delivery challenge can be raised and in case del delivery challenge ua bill can be generated can i integrate my system through api in my system so if your turnover is more than 500 crores then you can directly integrate your ERP or financial accounting system with the invoice API system. But if your turnover is less than 500, <laughs> 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 GSP or ERPs, or you can connect through those tax base who have already taken access through the API who have exceeded their turnover more than 500 crores. I think one of the participants uh, by name World Class who have connected uh, by name World Class. Can you please uh, mute your mic? Thank you. So uh, these are the options for connecting through API. So if you have turnover more than 500 crore, then you can directly integrate through the API with NIC system. And if not, then the option is either you can connect through the GSP or ERPs, or you can connect through those taxpayers who have exceeded their turnover more than 500 crore, and they have already taken the direct integration with NIC. You, uh, if they are your suppliers or recipients, they may be extending that service to you, uh, the, the connectivity to you, so that you can integrate your application uh, through the API. What are the modes of invoice registration for taxpayers with turnover less than 500 crore? As I mentioned uh, just now, uh, the GSP ERP option is one, or you can use the offline tools such as bulk generation or JEP off, or you can use JEP on, uh, to register invoice either in the online or offline mode. When you are using Japan, uh, if you don't have temporary internet connection, you can still make the entries into Japan. Th that data will be saved locally in your uh, uh, system. And subsequently, when you get connected to the internet, then the data flows to the server. Or you can download the uh, mobile application, uh, which is available on the e-invoice portal, and you can make use of the mobile application as well. So is there a facility to enter one invoice details at a time to register the invoice? Uh, in the bulk tool and API, uh, it can be done in, uh, mul uh, in multiple uh, invoice requests at a time. But when you are using JEPOF or JEPON, uh, there is a facility using uh, user-friendly forms. The taxpayer will be able to enter one by one invoice details and register the invoices. Can we use the same credentials to access e-invoice and e bill in production environment? Yes, e-invoice and e bill uh, systems are closely integrated. So whatever credentials you have on e bill portal, the same can be used on the e-invoice. And uh, in case you have registered in the invoice and you need to generate the e bills, then you can use the same credentials to generate the e bill as well. 
I have registered at GST portal. Do I have to register separately for EV bill and e-invoice? Yes, GST portal and uh, uh, e-invoice EV bill portals are two different systems. Uh, so you have to register separately for EV bill uh, and e-invoice. Uh, so one of them. Uh, but of course, for registration, the data uh, will be fetched from the common portal, which will be uh, used for pre-populating the data while registering in the uh, e-invoice or e-way bill portal. In case of export, we prepare invoice in dollars and how to prepare e-invoice, uh, whether in dollars or rupee. So as you are aware, all the returns that you file uh, to the government of India in the form of GST, R3B or R1, etc. are in uh, Indian rupees. So here also, all the values have to be entered in the Indian rupees itself. But if you are using the uh, API mode, then there are two specific fields where you can mention the currency in uh, foreign, uh, the currency type as well as the amount in foreign currency. And in case you are using the bulk tool, you can use the format C or D where there is a provision to enter the foreign currency and foreign currency type. But in case you are using the Japan and Japoff, this provision is not available. So what about export invoices? GSTN will not be available. Yes, when you are uh, raising the invoices uh, for export and they have to be registered, then the re recipient GSTN has to be entered as URP, unregistered uh, person. And then uh, state will be other country. Uh, if you are entering the code through API, then it will be either 96 or 99. Both are valid. And pin code will be six nines. So this is how you will be entering for the recipient details in case of exports. Can we have multiple user creation and administration option for multiple staff? Yes, if you are already using EV bill, this provision is already available in the EV bill where a main user can create sub users and sub users can uh, use their own mobile to get the OTP on their uh, respective mobile phones. Similarly, the option is available for the e-invoice as well when you are using the Japan or Japoff or bulk generation tools. The sub users themselves can uh, log in using their own sub user ID and they will be getting the OTP on their respective mobile and uh, they can do their work on the e-invoice. How to show packaging charges which is not quantified but taxable in nature? So any such charges like packaging or freight or insurance which are taxable and which need to be mentioned in the invoice, then you can add these charges as a separate line item, uh, maybe with the quantity as one, and uh, uh, then automatically they become uh, taxable uh, as per the validations in the e invoice. For continuous supply, where the quantity of supply is not fixed and is based on the site measurement and approval, can the material be dispatched on delivery challenge and basis and invoice and e-invoice can be generated on quantity measurement and site approval by the client. So another similar question uh, is about the liquid. Uh, liquid item where the actual quantity cannot be measured until it is delivered. Now the goods delivered ex excess or uh, excess or less quantity can be uh, issued, can be issue uh, credit notes and debit notes and in, uh, with the e-invoice next day after the delivery of goods. Uh, here by the introduction of the e-invoicing, all your practices, what you were doing with respect to issuance of the invoices will not get changed. So you will be following all the procedures, whatever you have been doing so far. Only additional thing that you are doing here is registering the invoice on the portal and getting the IRN and the QR code. So that is the only difference here. So whatever uh, you have been practicing so far with respect to these kind of scenarios, you will continue to do that. But only additional step here is the uh, registration of the invoice. So in case you are issuing the credit notes or debit notes, those things have to be uh, registered because the uh, invoices the credit notes and debit notes are the ones which are covered uh, for registration under the uh, e-invoicing system. For line sales, how to issue e-invoice on road? Uh, one option is since we have provided the Japan as well as the mobile application, the invoices can be registered on the spot also if it is feasible. In case it is not feasible, the goods can be moved with delivery challenge. A manual invoice may be issued on the spot. Subsequently, the invoice to be registered on the invoice port, uh, IRP 
or that is the invoice registration portal and IRN and QR code can be generated. And if the recipient insists, then the, the proper invoice with the IRN and the QR code can be issued again to the recipient. When invoice details need to be uploaded for export invoice, if port details to be changed, how to amend or correct? So once uh, port details are provided while generating the IRN, they cannot be updated. But in case the uh, dispatch from and ship to details are not provided while generating the IRN, then while generating the AV bill, there is an option where the dispatch from and ship to details can be entered. So this facility is available when you are generating an AV bill, uh, taking the IRN as a reference. So these details can be subsequently added. But if it is already given while generating the IRN, they cannot be modified. Do I need to generate the invoice on the IRP? So there is a misconception by some of the taxpayers. Uh, they think that uh, it is an online generation of invoices. No, it is not an online generation of the invoices. It is online registration of the invoices. So invoices will be generated as you have been doing all these days through your ERPs or financial accounting systems or manual entry, whatever, whatever it is. But once you have generated the invoice, only those invoice details are uploaded to the invoice registration portal or the IRP. Uh, after registration, you will be getting back the IRN and the QR code along with the signed invoice. But generation of e uh, generation of the invoice itself is not part of the e invoicing system. Can I amend the details of a reported invoice for which IRN has already been generated? No. Once the IRN uh, is generated by registering the invoice, no details of the invoice can be modified on the IRP. In case you come to know about any such mistakes that would have happened in the invoice, within 20, 24 hours, you can cancel the IRN, cancel the original invoice as well, generate a new invoice with the new invoice number and register the new invoice. But still, uh, if, you, if you are not able to cancel the uh, IRN, then there is an option to modify your content while you are uh, filing your GSTR1. So on the common portal while filing the GSTR1, then if any such changes need to be more, uh, done, you can carry out the changes in the GSTRN while filing the GSTR1 on the common portal. What is the time limit for generation of IRN? So as of now, uh, there is no uh, time limit. Uh, only those invoices which are generated or which are having the date after 1st October 2020 are accepted. So uh, uh, earlier, initially when we started e-invoicing, we had kept a limit of 24 hours, but uh, uh, based on the feedback from the industry, this particular validation has been removed. But there is a validation which checks for the date of the uh, invoice or the credit note or debit note, which should be more than 1st October 2020 as of now. But in future, government may notify that those invoices which are issued only in the current financial year or current month uh, only can be uh, registered in the IRP, but that that will be notified uh, through the government. If I have committed mistake in invoice and generated IRN for it, can I cancel the IRN and regenerate the IRN again for the same invoice? Generation of IRN for the same invoice is not allowed. If you have cancelled the IRN, then you have to cancel the original invoice itself and you have to generate a new invoice with a new number and the new newly generated invoice has to be registered on the portal and IRN and QR code has to be obtained. What are the time limits for cancelling the e-invoice and how long the invoices are available on the IRP for download? So 24 hours is the time limit for cancellation of the invoice and uh, uh, the invoice details will be available on the portal for two days only. So beyond two days, the invoice details will not be available for you to download or print. Within two days, you are supposed to download the invoice details from the portal. Can the taxpayer generate IRN after EV bill generation? Uh, yes, uh, ideally first in e invoice will be generated or registered and then the EV bill uh, will be uh, created. If the EV bill has to be generated for the invoice, but the transportation details are not available at the time of invoice generation, then how to generate the EV bill? So either a party slip can be generated and later transportation details can be uh, updated or uh, IRN can be generated and subsequently using the IRN as a reference, 
uh, e-wable can be generated. When an IRN is cancelled, whether the associated e-wable also gets automatically cancelled? No. While generating, both IRN and e-wable can be uh, generated simultaneously, but cancellation is a two-step uh, two process. First, e-wable has to be cancelled, and only after that, IRN can be cancelled. IRN with a valid e-wable cannot be cancelled. Do I need to print e-invoice as provided in the portal, or can I have my own format? We have given only a sample and uh, uh, ad hoc uh, uh, provision where you can print the invoices. But ideally, you are supposed to download the signed invoice, signed QR code into your system and import into your own system and print the invoices the way you want along with your logo, etc. But mandatory is printing the QR code on the invoice. Do I need to print the QR code on the e invoice? If so, what shall be its size and location on the invoice? A related question is while returning the IRN, the IRP also provides IRN number, acknowledgement number, date, etc. Whether all these also have to be printed? No. Uh, printing the QR code is mandatory and it can be placed anywhere on the invoice. There is no specific place for placing the QR code on the invoice while printing. And the size, it should be a sufficient big, sufficient size so that any QR code scanner should be able to scan this QR code. So you don't have to print the acknowledgement number, etc. They have been given as an additional facility for easy reference. So whether B2C invoices can be reported to IRP for generation of IRN? No, B2C are not accepted. Can e-commerce entities generate e-invoices on behalf of the sellers on their platforms? Yes, uh, the, those, tax, those uh, entities who have registered themselves as TCS, they can uh, generate the invoices on behalf of the suppliers. Who has to generate reverse charge mechanism? Only suppliers are allowed to uh, register the invoices on the IRP. So even the RCM uh, invoices have to be registered by the suppliers themselves. In case of breakdown of internet connectivity in certain areas, will there be any relaxation? This will be uh, announced by the government as and when such situations arise. In the current schema, there is no provision to report details of supplies uh, not covered under GST. Uh, uh, like al uh, alcoholic beverages, etc., which are outside GST, what to do? In such cases, separate invoices have to be uh, issued, one for GST and other for non-GST supplies or supplies, and only the GST invoices have to be registered on the IRP. So TDS of income tax, there is no provision in the schema, like where to show this. Uh, as of now, there is no separate field for mentioning such charges like TDS of income tax, etc. These things have to be mentioned under the other, other charges field. What is the maximum number of line items which can be reported in an invoice? Uh, up to 1000 items can be entered per invoice. And if it is beyond that, then you can raise a ticket. We'll let you know what to do for such cases where you have uh, invoices with more than 1000 uh, line items. In case of credit and debit notes, is there any validation with respect to the referred invoice number? No, we are not validating or checking the original invoice number whenever credit note or debit note is getting registered on the IRP. How are the interstate or intrastate transactions identified? This is based on the supplier state code and the state code mentioned in the place of supply field. Based on this, the system will uh, take it either as a interstate or intrastate transaction. On e invoice portal, IRN generation are failing because of minor variations. Earlier, this was the issue. Now we have uh, given some tolerance for this validation uh, considering the round off, etc. Now this issue is not there. So now this is the end of the frequently asked questions. Now we will take up the questions which are already put in the chat box and uh, uh, you can uh, keep posting the questions in the chat box, whichever uh, is possible. We'll be uh, uh, taking them up one by one and uh, answering. Uh, Sunita, Suresh, can you share that uh, question answers? Yes, sir. Sunita will be sharing. Thank you, thank you, Suresh Medisar, for uh, beautifully elucidated the whole question answers, whatever the people asked over a period of time. And now it is uh, open to the question answer session. I think most of the answers have been dealt in this particular question itself, but still there are questions, still there are some doubts for a tax base and the tax consultants. We would like to see to that those question answers are uh, answered to them and let us make it a e-invoice e successful in the days to come. The first question is here. 
how invoice for export is prepared. So invoice, invoice may be generated for export also. Whatever the way you are preparing the tax invoice, the same thing you can do for export also, and you can take it further on that. There is no change in like because export invoice also is a regular invoice, and you are doing based on that. Uh, sorry, uh, can you read the next question so that you can assign? Yes, sir. I will. I will read the uh, questions. Uh, the next one we are good transport. We are goods transport agency and clearing and forwarding agent. Do we require to generate e invoice? Nagendra, sir, can. Nagendra Kumar, sir. Sir, you can unmute if you are muted. I think sir is uh, still not on the line, but still that see what uh, the best of our knowledge. See, as my exemption notification is a goods transport agency, the GTA is the being exempted. exempted in the particular category. But if it is a B2B transaction, means to say if it's a GTA is a B2B transaction, I think such uh, uh, taxpayers have to generate uh, e invoice. No, uh, no, I have to add that Dr. Murikrishna has told. G2 goods transport agency, banking and insurance and uh, travel agencies have been exempted for generating G invoice. This is add on to what Monte Krishna has told. So G goods transport agency need not have to generate the E invoice. Marji, may I come in? Ah, please, please. Yes, sir, please. Uh, yeah, uh, that uh, GTA may be exempt, but the clearing and forwarding agent is not exempt. So as okay. a clearing and forwarding, uh, forwarding agent, you will have to generate. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, the uh, answer is clear now. Next, uh, ma'am, if we generate a, a invoice in portal and after that we need to some correct, what is the possible way to alter the e invoice? Over to Bert, sir. So within 24 hours, you can cancel the e invoice if you are generated. I you have to. Generate one more invoice for whatever the correction you have made because the annual invoice also you will scratch it, we cancel it and prepare one more invoice for that. And that invoice we will upload and generate a one more uh, e invoice for that. So if you have made a mistake in any of the invoice, within 24 hours you can cancel. However, subsequently, uh, GSTR, uh, GSTN will update that how they are going to provide a mechanism to update or correct in the GSTR one. Dheeranji, can you update on this? How we are providing a mechanism on GSTR one to correct? Yeah, the next question is one minute. Yes, in GSTR one, uh -huh. there is an option to delete the uploaded uh, automatically uploaded details and then uh, to correct them. But when they are corrected, the IRN number. Uh, uh, that has been generated against them from the system and that was auto populated that gets uh, deleted so that indicating that this document has been modified by the user subsequent to the issue of irn okay okay thank you sir we can go next one. yes sir next one at the time of filing gstr1 realize that one invoice is missed from the generating e invoice can I generate e invoice on the 8th of following month for a tax invoice issued in previous month or is there any limit time limit is there for a e invoice? Energy, can you answer this? So as of now, the limit is not there, but then uh, the limit is going to be imposed for uh, people above uh, 500 crores turnover. So that is under consideration of the government, but as of now, there is no limit. Yeah. So question here is no question here is once again to add what uh, Dheeraj uh, has told is you can if you are not generated previous month now still in one month time will be there within that you can regenerate the e invoice can be generated and if you are accounted previously you need not have to account in the next month 
Hmm. If you are not accounting in previous month, you have to account in the current month and take it further on the GSTR one. In the current practice, what you are following, the same way it will continue on that. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, the next question is how to bill ETA in e invoicing since it has KLR as UQC and customer wants the material UQC as data. Shall we select others in GSTN for reporting regarding liter billing? Please confirm. No, liter is a UQC is already available in the unit quantity code. Liter and kiloliter is available. Liter you can use it and generate the e-invoice based on that. Yeah. The next one. Where can I find the AP integration code for uh, PHP software? Uh, for PHP software, we are not provided. We have provided for a .NET and Java code that you can go to the portal and use it. PHP, you have to build up your own uh, interface and uh, use the API. Okay. The next one now, uh, invoicing conversion rate for export of services and goods. No, this e invoicing conversion, conversion rate for export of services and goods. Uh, it vote to Dheeraj, sir. No, these will be as per the notification issued by the government. I mean, there is no nothing special with reference to e invoicing, uh, as far as I know. Okay. The next one we are GTA. This year we have shifted from RCM to FCM, a reverse charge to the forward charge. We are charging 12% to our customers when we are using our uh, using out LR. Receipt. It's a goods transport agency. This year we have shifted from RCM to FCM. We are charging 12% to our customer when we are using our LR. I no, didn't exemption notification does not uh, make difference between the RCM and FCM. So means to say the only for uh, B2B transactions, they have to generate e invoices. Yes. Yes, sir. Next, uh, I generate 16 e invoices, but the error of 2150 shows on the e invoice portal. I want to know that how to delete all the 16 e invoices and generate again. Is it possible or not? Go to Batsal. No, once you have generated the e invoice within 2150, it is showing that it is a duplicate invoice. You are trying to generate once again on the same document number. So once you have generated, you cannot. Within 24 hours, you can cancel it. Now, already I think 24 hours has been passed through. You cannot cancel it. Only way is in GSTR when it comes, GSTR 1, you can make the amendment or a can the delete there and add a new invoice there. Okay, thank you, sir. The next question is from automotive industry. How to make credit note and debit note in e-invoice systems kindly clarify? So yeah, already has been uh, the question answers. It's very clear. The credit and debit note have to be uh, up, uh, registered in the invoice system, and uh, there's nothing else to clarify. It's only for B2B transaction and credit and debit note and export invoices to be uploaded in invoice system. The next one, our clients are foreign clients, and we are raising export invoices. Do invoicing applicable for us? May it is applicable I only when we raise. Invoices to B2B domestic clients. May I come in? I have to just uh, give a clarification with, with reference to the last question. Yes, sir, right. please, sir. And debit notes. Now, actually, recently, we have noticed that there is a difference in validation at the uh, e-invoice portal, that IRN, as well as the GST, uh, GSTN. GSTN allows only a sing, uh, single, uh, single series of uh, credit and debit note. They should be a different. I mean, if you add CN or DN before the number, then the series become different. Whereas the IRN portal, it allows the single series. So I think uh, that, that uh, adjustment is being made and both of them should be of a different series. Only difference can be that uh, you can add CN or DN before the number and report. Thank you, sir. And uh, the another question is our clients are foreign clients and we are raising export invoices. Do e invoicing applicable for us? Is it applicable only when we raise us invoices to B2B domestic clients? I think for export in the exporter, export invoices, the e invoicing is mandatory. 
isn't it dheeraj sir yes yes yeah so next one we have products under different hsn code how do entries in offline in invoice file we have product under different hsn code how do entries in offline in invoice file over to bud sir yeah there is a offline tool we have provided based on excel uh, for format also and japan is a browser based tool is also there there you can enter line items hsn code wise entries can be made what you are preparing in the invoice the same way you can enter there and the automatically it will create a one file which can be uploaded and the invoice can be generated for that please go to the portal there is a complete video available how you can enter and how you can generate the whole uh, invoice is available document is also available ppt is also available you can go through that and understand the whole thing and the next one is as e invoice option started for exporting concerns it's already answered if the uh, the turnover exceeds 20 crore and above if an exporter they have to raise uh, uh, e invoices and uh, the next one we are merchant exporters procure material from various manufacturers and export the same in export we generate invoice and send to custom for shipping bill generation after shipping bill is generated the material is carted in custom sometime we may have deliveries in part from different manufacturers after material is completed custom verification takes place and final shipping bill is approved and we hand over material to agent our questions are we claim refund after paying gst and export what should be invoice date in above situation and another question is when we export from tally shipping bill number port of export are not reflected in gst r1 do we need to generate e invoice for exempt sales like meis or re export sale material not coming out of a custom let us answer one by one i think uh, i request dheeraj sir to throw light on this particular because uh, the, the the delivery and the shipping and uh, the bill of lading there is uh, some confusion among the taxpayers i think i request dheeraj sir to throw light on that no i think whatever practice they were following uh, with reference to this uh, date invoice date the same should be there the only material thing is that it uh, invoice has to be reported and then iron has to be generated what should be invoice date in above situation the first question is that the uh, the question is that one could be the date when they procure material the other could be the i mean when they report material at the customs so uh, i think whatever practice they were following they have to follow that practice only yeah, exactly uh, okay so when we export from tally shipping bill number port of export are not reflected in gst r1 i think uh, i think this question should uh, be uh, should can be able to said by the tally software people only that uh, we, we can't answer that particular because some other software provider is providing some uh, mechanism in that okay next do we need to generate e invoice for exempt sales like or e export sale material not coming out of custom this i will have to see yes sir yeah we look into that and i think uh, the who are asked will get back to them do we need to generate e invoice for a dr and a credit note yeah debit note and credit note i think we have to raise we have to raise the invoices next after we can we card the material sometime there may be some issue and we need to take part material back down and not being exported what is the process to be done as sir explained i think what is the process already it is in practice the same practice has to be continued and for export invoices and for b2b e invoice has to be generated uh, registered on the irp portal next please the material is approved and being exported only after custom verification so can we upload e invoice after customs approval there uh, sir uh, i think these are some questions they routinely they ask in our uh, web, the offline webinars too no i think uh should not be like that that you report invoice after the approval of the customs because uh, i mean it has to be reported uh, once the invoice is prepared is prepared and material uh, material is uh, submitted for customs approval 
it should be so that. So customs approval and invoice generation are totally two different things. Mm -hmm. So once the the shipment, when the goods are uh, dispatched and they're their movement, I think the invoice has to be generated, not waiting for the customer. Am I right, sir? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And out of file rectification in the invoice, as my knowledge goes, as of now, there can't be no rectification in the invoice. It has to be cancelled. This has already been answered in the Q and A, and it has to be cancelled within twenty four hours after generation. It has to be cancelled and regenerated with a different number. Yes, sir. The next one, I think uh, most of the questions are answered. Only one, I think we'll get back to you on that. Uh, what that's what there is. We'll get back to you on that. During bulk upload, if there are duplicate invoices, we will entire upload fail. Or duplicate invoice will be skipped, and rest of invoice will be uploaded without any message. I think uh, I, it's over to but sir. Yeah, when you upload the bulk cases, wherever the invoices are correct, for those cases, e invoice will be generated. Rest of the cases, whatever error there, with the error, it will give the list to you. Maybe a duplicate or any error. Then you have to download those cases, make the correction, and upload and generate once again the invoice for them. Already clear cut the message will come there. Thank you, but sir. And this question, I think we are already answered. We are goods transport agency and clearing and forwarding agent and related services like warehousing facility provider. Do we require to generate e invoice turnover about 20 crore? Yes, you have to generate e invoice for B2B transactions, which are about 20 crore and uh, about turnover. B2B credit note, debit note, and even for export, uh, they have to generate. Next one. How can I recover e invoice after deleting in tally prime? I think this question should be asked by your uh, tally people only. But as an IRP portal, as we have already said, uh, it can be accessed through your uh, IRA number or through acknowledgement number. And I think it will be there for two to three days on the portal and two days. In that particular time, uh, you, uh, you people can access the database with the acknowledgement number or having IRA on the invoices. Next. Can we send a material on delivery channel with eBay bill and make an invoice later as per our convenience? Can we send the material on delivery channel with eBay bill and make e invoice later as per our convenience? See, the question is not clear what is the convenience, but you can send a material on a delivery channel with the eBay bill, which depends upon the nature of transactions, and e invoice can be generated as explained already. Well, what Next. I can is verify it? is. Sir, is yeah, as per law. What, what law says is that uh, invoice is not valid until the IRN is generated. So you have to yes, keep sir. that in mind. Yeah, that also should be kept in mind and uh, during the movement of goods and if it is uh, mandatory, if it is not generated, if the, e bill, if the invoice is not there, I think uh, the uh, stakeholders may get into an issue with the officers. Next one. Sir, is it necessary to upload all bills, even though B2C bill in e-invoicing, and how to upload bills. Say, I think this already we have very clearly we are told that the e-invoicing is only for B2B transactions, business to business transaction, not for business to consumer or customer. I think this is uh, very clear in this. Next, as GTA, if we are using outside vehicle from URD, is RCM is applicable to us under FCM mechanism? I think this is not related to our re invoicing uh, schema. I think, uh, Dira sir, can you say so on this? I, I mean, the question does not seem to be very clear. Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll skip that and let us go to the next one. Uh, we are importers of oil and gas fields equipment in India and supplies to PSUs like ONGC Oil India Limited. Sir, we have to mention some details like our vendor code number, PO number, etc. on the invoices. How can that be done on e invoices? Yeah, there is a provision. So there is a provision in API or a schema what has been provided where you can enter the vendor code or vendor details or PO number and item details. Everything can be given. The schema is exhaustive. All kind of information what you provide in the invoice by the various uh, agencies or various sectors have been incorporated. If you are using API mode, definitely you can pass that and do it. Or otherwise, if you are using a bulk mode, there is a provision in the bulk mode also to enter that. 
this uh, PO number and other thing, you can take it further on that line. However, GS, JEP online and offline tools are not having this provision. They have meant for only a small taxpayer who are not having any ERP system to generate the e invoice with a QR code and IRN number. That is a simple mechanism we have provided where we have taken only mandatory information what the governments want. I mean, e invoice purpose it is required. So PO number and other things, you have to do the API mode or the bulk mode. Yeah. I think uh, the taxpayer, the stakeholders can look into that uh, e-invoice portal and the tools in that particular bulk upload. There are four formats, A, B, C, D formats have been given. And once they go through that in the detail uh, Q&A, they will understand the uh, this one. They're all provided as uh, Sir uh, said. Even in APM mode also it's provided, though it is not mandatory as per the performer, but they have been optionally all the data has been given. Next. Uh, how to generate e invoice of tally prime and how it will reflect on GSA site? I think this question should be asked to the tally software provider only. Okay. We are service sector organization, rupees 5 crore domestic turnover. Can we e invoice be applied to the same context with export turnover 20 crore? See, please understand uh, the 20 crore is an aggregate turnover, not only pertain to the which state you belong. Whichever the state we are doing a turnover more than 20 crore means to say, for example, I am from Karnataka, I have a business in Tamil Nadu, I have a business in Kerala. My turnover spreads to different places at 5 crore, 5 crore, 5 crore. In that sense, if it crosses 20 crore, need not be in a particular state. Remember that. And preceding three, the preceding financial years, that also one should be kept. Right from 2017-18 till 2021, in whichever the year you cross 20 crores, Whichever the year you cross 20 cross aggregate turnover, you have to generate uh, the e invoice. Even in a present financial year, if you are if you are not crossing, then you need not for this as a beginner, you need not generate. But the preceding financial years, if you are generate crossing 20 crore, even for the present financial if the turnover is less than 20 crore, then also you have to generate. Please bear this in mind. Okay. Next, what is time limit for generating e invoices? I think this question has already been answered umpteen number of times. Okay. For repetitive, once again, within 24 hours, there is a question of cancellation of invoices. And as Zira sir already told, there is umpteen number of time has been given. There could be a uh, notification shortly to limit to the more than 500 crore and above. Please uh, look into that. So still there is a time to generate e invoices for turnovers. Uh, the next question is, if we cancel e invoice from portal, can we generate it again? We issue an invoice number 10 from our accounting software and issued e invoice. If we cancel it from portal, can we issue our invoice number 10 again? I think this question has been already answered. You can cancel it and uh, manual, you can cancel it for the same invoice, but you have to keep in your books of account all the cancelled invoices details because even our system remembers which are all the details have been cancelled. Okay, whenever there's audit or verification, that's very uh, essential. Next, which date has to be considered for export invoice? Invoice date or bill of lading date? Please clarify as some officer referring invoice date and some are insisting BOL date. Because of this, our refunds are getting rejected. I think I request Dear Sir to throw light on this once again for a clarity of uh, tax base and stakeholders. No, it should be invoice date only. No? What, I mean, I mean, what kind of objection is there from the officer that I don't understand? Uh, we need to know. Then only we can provide some uh, I mean, clarification or some maybe some resolution of this. Yes, sir. I think because uh, these are some of the questions we do come across. That's what we also so, tell in our office. Yes, it's sir. very similar to the previous question. Nagendra Kumar, sir, is there. I think, uh, sorry, that. Nagendra Kumar, sir. I think, sir. Uh, Connected, okay, but muted, I think. Oh. Yes, sir, Deeraj. I think uh, we can get, take these questions and some of the questions we can raise to the, for uh, okay. DRU, where I think things can be, uh, some SOP or some clarifications can be given. There are some confusions uh, among the uh, Only I lost the uh, yes, this point. Would you like me to? Be, can you just come back to me on this point? Is there anything what uh, I need to clarify? Ma, sir, uh, the, the taxpayer is asking 
which date has to be considered for export invoice, invoice date or a bill of dating date. Please clarify as some officers are referring invoice date and some are resisting BOL date. Because of this, our refunds are getting rejected, sir. Yes, sir. What you say? Which date is to be considered for export invoice, invoice date or bill of lading date? Please clarify as some officers are referring to invoice date and some are resisting our bill of lading date. Uh, because of this, refunds are getting rejected. I think the queries will have to be very clear. Insofar as GST refunds are concerned, the relevant date or the date on which an export is actually made in respect of physical export of the goods, that is the date on which the lead shipment, uh, 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 shipment order is passed by the proper officer. Uh, the law is very clear on this, but uh, uh, we would certainly, I think, I would do one thing, uh, Murli, on this point. If any supplementary information, if the query is sent to you through the chat box or whatever it is, flag it to us and ask him to also provide his email ID. We will respond to that in a very uh, clear cut manner. Yes. I don't think there is an issue. It is only an export invoice date and the relevant date. More important is the relevant date of export. That is very important for the purpose of computing the time limit as well as for quarterly availment of the refunds. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next is uh, why QR code has been made compulsory and invoice being issued to recipients. I am CA. My small taxpayer who issues three to four man invoices in a day, they can't issue invoice with QR code as don't have ERP and won't want to use e invoice prepared by ERP. However, they will register invoice as per GST rule, but don't force for QR code. Please pro provide alternative mechanism. Uh, then, uh, sir, I request uh, Nagendra Kumar sir and Bud sir to answer this particular question. Deeraji, do you want to answer this? That I can't answer, but can you clarify whether that QR code for printing that QR code on the invoice, is it necessary to have IRP or I mean uh, that uh, some uh, ERP from somebody or uh, it can be printed like that only? No, he is saying he is having preparing a manual invoice uh. and he is not having any ERP solution. But mm -hmm. however, you will want to go to the portal and uh, enter all the requirement like a eBay bill. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want to take the e invoice generated from my portal. He want to issue his commercial invoice. He is saying for that he wanted a clarification because QR code means he has to have a system where in commercial invoice also has to be included there and provided there. No, but the, I think only I can only say that the government first is mainly on digitization of the uh, economy. So I think. Uh, that printing of QR code is from uh, from that point of view, but it's a policy call whether okay. to make it mandatory or not. I mean, in that regard, that uh, representation will have to be made to the government. Fine, fine. Okay, Mr. So, but, Mr. But, I would like to come in here. I think yes, uh, basically what we are looking in the e invoice is the uniqueness of the document, which is machine readable. Right now, basically we are looking at we are looking at uh, now the invoice only on a B2B transaction. Now, on a B2B transaction, the matter which mat uh, which is actually the beneficial to the taxpayer as well as the tax administration is that there is an audit trail electronically available with regard to generation uh, from the supplier side and the credit flowing into on the recipient side. We are auto populating this into the GSTR one wherever it's applicable. Now, the Query is asking about doing away with the QR code. Is it that the recommendation is there is a unique ID? Is it what is we it are what Maybe, sir. Maybe, maybe sir. Maybe. 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 Of course, no, we are deleting it. You can lock one. You can unmute and uh, speak, sir. I have muted. Yes, yes. Sir, uh, we are providing IRA number, which is a 64 digit, and we are providing like a UA bill one uh, acknowledgement number and date is there and QR codes are being re replied back to the taxpayer. So 
so he is asking alternative mechanism i don't know what he mean by the alternative mechanism any alternative like writing in a pen like uh, ira number or acknowledgement number is referring maybe the referring on that as the question is not very clear i think i would request uh, the concerned person to make a representation uh, kindly forward it uh, murli to me uh, the, uh, by mail we will examine it in the policy wing yes sir yes sir our, our reiteration is that invoice is primarily introduced for b2b transactions to have the unique id to the document to which the credit flows from a supplier to a recipient and that process will that process and the integrity will have to be maintained and there cannot be any compromise on that uh, while retaining this integrity if there is a workaround possible and that has to be considered we need to examine it in detail further okay thanks thank you sir we'll uh, we'll i uh, will flag to your email uh, uh, policy wings the question who has asked uh, i think some shaker please elaborate on that and send it so that we can try to check up that sure but sir sure next one as a recipient of invoice i have not been enabled by nic to download the invoice this is required for me to integrate with my erp system to avoid duplicate entry of purchase and to get seamlessly it is easy this has been promised by gst council by introducing e invoice since last one and a half year it has not been done sir uh, this question it seems to be i think uh, recipients who are uh, receiving e invoices they want to have a download uh, facility i think i uh, I, i request nagendra kumar sir to throw light on this only this issue is uh, under examination uh, uh, we need to take a call i think uh, with gstn and uh, the gspwd will discuss the matter further and then we will give a final uh, decision on this shortly uh, i think dheeraj just to add something on this uh, you can go ahead otherwise uh, we can move to the next question if i may add something is that uh, uh, nic is uh, that uh, gstn is already in the process of providing the facility to download the e invoices right now the invoice can be downloaded from the uh, point uh, from the irn portal within next within 48 hours if it goes that is by, that is by the supplier that is by the supplier yeah that is uh, it will be provided by the supplier also as well as by the recipient also the okay. download would be okay. available to both there is sir if i can shall i uh, shall i uh, add on to my view yeah. so there is uh, the question is that what actually they are asking but uh, you as i know the statistics on 74 lakh tax payers uh, recipients are receiving the invoices already generated uh -huh. by 1.5 lakhs tax payers their question the request is that uh, why can't we download our uh, e invoices at any given point of time into our portal only instead of uh, we, uh, the initial period only any time we can download so that seamless data can be integrated with their erp that's what their question even okay. they would ask uh, this question quite often to us also if i may clarify it is like that the limit of 48 hours has been kept at the irn end uh from the point of view of the data privacy now if he if he, if he if the irn is allowed to uh, if irp is allowed to uh, i mean keep the data beyond 48 hours then it will so happen that in case of a multiple irp scenario each of the irp will be having a host of data which uh, i mean the, from where the uh, i mean dhiraj ji dhiraj ji they are not asking for a supplier supplier what you are given is okay they are asking as a recipient i am not getting at all as a recipient i am buyer so buyer so, is not getting the signed e invoice copy now so that is what i am telling that from the, uh, at the uh, gstn we have we are in the testing process uh, okay. of this uh, facility so it is going to come shortly okay sir thank you let's move to the next question sir how to create a invoice for export If that is already been explained there's nothing to say once again one second they can go to the q and a they can look into it shall we file bill today and raise invoice on the day when goods are moving we shall we bill five yeah that can be i think uh, that flexibility is there but during the moment if there is a e invoice is a mandatory thing for that particular consignment without that if there are already uh, cases where uh, the officers have uh, levied penalties for such uh, transactions e invoice has to be there such a mandatory transactions 
Next is as the invoice be made from registered office only, or it can be made from any place as convenient any time convenient 24 hours. That shouldn't be matter as long as uh, you are a uh, enabled taxpayer who having a more than 24 and above you have, when you have multiple login uh, other than the registered office or your branch office wherever there is login facilities are there and it can be uh, enabled you can generate that shouldn't be a problem e invoice date will be different from eva bill i think uh, it can be it can be no problem it yes, can sir. be next uh, we have three different gst numbers for same pan an aggregate turnover is about 20 crore out of three units. I think this already I explained. As a, as in the de definition of aggregate turnover, whenever whichever the state you have more than uh, 20 crore in in totality, such taxpayers though they have turnovers in different states, you have less. You have to generate uh, e invoices. Next is e invoice cancel after two days if the goods are not sent from. Uh, Yeah, e invoice cancel after two days if the goods are not sent. It is not after possible to cancel. Only they have to amend in a GSTR one directly. Okay. How is a private limited company into services enabled for e invoicing? Just two invoices every month. That is one export invoice without payment of tax, and other B two B invoice. Considering the business volume of invoice, can we go ahead with your JEP offline tool and register the invoices? Also, what is the time limit for registering invoices and IRP? Over to Batson. Yeah, you can use a JAP offline or JAP online tool you can use, which is more uh, easier than the JAP offline tool. Offline tool is the old tool. JAP online is a new tool where you can, in one stream, you can completely generate the invoice without again preparing the Excel file and uploading kind of a thing. That can uh, take up. What is the time limit for registering invoices on IRP? As already told you, government is going to give some time limit. If I prepare now invoice today, maybe in a couple of days or 15 days, you how to generate. Otherwise, that becomes an invalid invoice. Thank you, sir. Next one is good morning. Uh, yeah, a particular GST number appearing active in website, but while filing GST one, that particular GST number is not accepted by the website because it's not all are verified. Looking at the number of transactions, it's difficult to verify such minute details. So, Dheeraj, but sir, can you look into it? No, I did not. That GSTR one, they are saying, then if they give more detail uh, through the ticket, uh, then GSTN can reply back on that. Okay, okay. Thank you. If the invoice date and the LEO date and late export order. Yeah. Is different which date has to be taken by generating e invoice? Invoice generation generally goes on the invoice date only, bill date or tax invoice date. Yeah. Next, if we are uh, sending goods for demo purpose in this time, we need to create delivery challenge and e way bill. After the demo, if customer is interested to buy the goods in this case, how to generate e way bill? So, when you are delivery challenge, you are generating e way bill, you are already generating after demo. If the customer is interested to buy the goods in this scenario, how to generate the e-way bill? I don't understand what is the again. And what, what is trying to tell Andre after the demo for the demo purpose, they're taking a DC along okay. with the e-way bill. Once okay. the demo is over, when they're raising a, a invoice, means for a sale invoice, how to generate another e-way bill? That's what he's asking. I think there shouldn't be a problem. They can no. generate the e-way bill for a invoice yeah, for that generating. It should have been uh, e invoice rather than e-way yeah. bill. The yeah, e in, in the if they it is the e invoice requirement, then you can prepare. You need not have to bring back the goods. Goods can be there in the customer place only. You prepare the invoice what you prepare now currently. Same you upload on the e invoice portal and issue that uh, e invoice to the party. Thank you, sir. Next one, while taking e invoice at a second time, while taking e invoice at a second time, the iron changes. OC details mismatch with QR code. Practical session at Kochi will be convenient to us. Taking invoice at the second time. Question is not clear. Okay. And I think I request the person who has raised the question to send it by mail and we'll look into that uh, properly. Uh, I think uh, we need to clear, clear, clearly tell the participants that once an e invoice is generated and unique IRN uh, uh, number is given, 
that invoice is valid and it can be cancelled within the stipulated timeline as Mr. Butt has already mentioned. And if it is cancelled, a new invoice is generated. So what does the queries want to ask about invoice at a second time? There is no option for a second time. The invoice which has been generated in the earlier one, either it is cancelled or it survives. And there cannot be a duplication of an invoice. I think we, let us be very clear on this. The IRN changes, voucher details mismatch with QR code. I, I, I don't know the query is not very clear. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Second time, the invoice number has to be different. That yes, is sir. what uh, he makes. Go to yeah. the next question, please. Next, is there any specific Excel version of bulk invoicing? I think it is already there on the portal, and uh, the tools, the taxpayers can download those bulk tools. They can do it. The next one, uh, we are not able to log in sub user in JEP tool showing error, invalid login credentials, even through putting correct login credentials. I think uh, the question is not. Uh, I think I leave it to uh, I, over to Butcher to look into that question. Uh, yeah, I, uh, we they were getting, but you please write the ticket with the GSTN help desk so that uh, we get the more detail. Then give the more detail. Then we'll check up and examine. But this will not be the uh, case. But we'll check up and get back because when you are using the JEP tool, online tool, OTP also will come. If mobile number is not there, you are not given to the sub user. Then he will not be able to log in and do it. Next one is QR code and IRN number is not compulsory and export invoice, even if you are false under invoice. See, it's already made clear if you are crossing more than 20 crore as an aggregate turnover for an export invoices, you have to generate invoices which has most QR code and IRN number. Yes, please explain how to do export invoice. There's nothing to explain. I think uh, this is not a relevant question for the particular session. Next, I started uploading e invoices in version 2.0. Version 2, I'm unable to upload bulk invoices, sir, so that it is taking more time to upload every invoice one by one. As we are already know, already the stake at, at, at taxpayers are generating invoices and the bulk upload tool. Any queries, any difficulties are there, as Butts are suggested, please raise a ticket on the GSTN portal in detail. The technical team will look into that, the version. Next. Currently, there is a no API available to extract the list of registered persons who are required to issue e invoice. List available in NIC Excel is not exhaustive and correct. Uh, yeah, currently we are not providing any API to download the eligible list. Those who are people are having their uh, suppliers, maybe around 10, 20, they can check up on the portal one by one and take it because this is purposely not been given because of the performance issue. So that's why we are not in. And list provide available in NIC Excel is exhaustive. It is exhaustive in the sense who are generating the e way, e way, e invoice we are providing. Those who are enabled but not generating, we are not giving them. Maybe they might have exempted or whatever reason. We are only giving the list of the people who are generating the e invoice in the list. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, for yeah. It. Next one. No, Abhi so Abhi Somvar Somvar ko main nahi ja raha hu. So Sunday ko you nahi jana chahta hu. Ek din pehle. Nagendra sir, can you mute your mic? Hey, Somvar ko suma main ek GST ka kam dikha do. Kuch meeting. Please let me know in the next question. Please let me know. E invoice do differ from E way bill? If any problem. No problem. It can differ. I request all the part. The next one. Uh, once the export is done, within how many days the invoice has to be generated? This question has already been answered. You have to generate when the shipping, when you dis start dispatching the goods itself, not after exporting. Okay, but if you have not done it, still uh, there is availability of generating invoices. Following for is regarding GST filing. On generation of error report and uploading of JSON, when a reset or a cleanup of data is made, the auto-populated e invoice also got cleaned up permanently. Is this correct? We also notices that certain e invoices. I uh, it's over to but sir. Generation of error report on uploading of a JSON when a reset or cleanup made is auto-populated invoices also get cleaned up. No, it will not be get cleaned up permanently. It will be already available through MIS report. You can see the details. It may not be showing when we are uploading. But there in MIS report, it will show whichever e invoice has been generated, you can see. But which has been having an error, which has not been generated, that will not be available in the system. Next question. 
Yeah, next one. Thank you, sir. E invoice date different from invoice appointment date. Any problem that has been answered already. The next question: When to upload JSON file on portal IRP? Can we upload JSON on portal before shipping bill? I think this has been answered already. There is nothing to answer. One second for the same question. Next one, please. Can we create a e invoice before eBay bill generation? If amount more than eBay bill limit, certainly you can create a e invoice before eBay bill generation. But during the movement of uh, goods, eBay bill is mandatory. That should be noted. Next one, uh, we have certain questions regarding invoice related to export invoice, which has been already answered for export of uh, goods for export services. The invoicing has to be done. Registered. We have made e invoice for SEZ unit. Please, uh, yeah, we have made e invoice for SEZ unit. By mistake, command was on payment of EGST, but IGST not charged in e invoice. E invoice portal accept the transaction generate e invoice, which later on rejected by GST alone. How to handle such situation? I request, uh, but uh, dear sir, to answer this question. I think in this regard, the validations at the IRP portal and uh, G, G, uh, and the GSTN portal uh, are being aligned. Uh, it has already been taken up with the GST, uh, with the IRP. Okay. Next, can we dispatch car cargo from multiple factory in the same invoice? Whatever the business practice they are following, they can continue on that as per the rule. Okay, next. next I think there is no special clear. procedure. Mr. Bart has correctly mentioned. I think, in so far as whatever procedure has been followed in respect of the physical invoice, the same thing can be followed in the e invoice regime as well. Thank you, sir. Next is how to generate the e invoice of B2C sales. Please note, everyone, there is no e invoicing for B2C sales. Business to customer, business to consumer, there is no e invoice to be generated or registered on the portal. Okay, it's very clear. It's only for B2B, business to business, and credit notes, debit notes, and also for export invoices. Next question Can we generate multiple EV bill against one e invoice? But, sir, you can. You can do that because already in a current system, also that provision is there whenever you are having a continuous supply is there or when the you are having a uh, SKD or uh, this one is the semi knockdown uh, material you are moving. That time you are generating a multiple e way bills based on one invoice. Same mechanism holds good here also. Thank you, sir. Next is if we issue a delivery challenge and it's e bill at the time of boots movement, can we issue e invoice later? Which date will reflect on e invoice? I think this question has been answered already quite a uh, number of times. If send the goods and approval subsequently, should I generate invoice? That also has been answered. Next, sir, I have missed the introduction session. Is it possible to get the old link? I think uh, this uh, session is getting, it's been video recorded. It will be uploaded on the uh, YouTube and uh, the taxpayers who have missed the session, they can look into that. They can uh, listen to that. What is the time period to generate e bill after uploading invoice in the portal? This also has been answered already. Next. How to create buyer profile for the frequent buyer? I'll uh, over to back, sir. How to create a Japan, yeah, Japan and Japov tool has a facility to create a frequent buyers and frequent products also. You can go to the video available on the portal where it explains how the Japan tool and off tool can be used. It explains how you can create uh, the frequently uh, your buyers or products and you can use them also. Thank you, sir. Uh, next one is delivery challenge mandatory or optional for shipment more exceeding rupees 50,000 or distance more than 50 kilometer after e invoice implementation. See, this is nothing to do with that. Whatever the rules applied for e bill generation, still now it applies. Same uh, procedure. If the transaction is value is more than 50,000 and above, e bill is very much mandatory for transportation of goods. And if his e invoice is also mandatory for who has the turnover more than 20 crore and above, even they have to generate e invoices also. Next, how to handle e invoices fail to cancel within the time allowed to cancel the invoice? 
This also has been answered already. It's a repeated question once again. Next, if we are getting job work done from domestic market and the EV bill should be generated in job work value or total export value as per e invoice. Dheeraj sir, I'll go to Dheeraj sir. No, I think that e, uh, e invoice will have to be generated as per the export value. Na? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Next, export invoice not getting added in GST one. Whether to add manually? Yeah, it has to be added manually. Okay. Next one. Okay. Time limit for generating it has been answered. Okay, if IGST values differs on IE invoice compared to shipping bill due to exchange rate fluctuation, then what is to be done? I think uh, the queries will have to understand one thing. Uh, in so far as the valuation under IGST Act is concerned, it's your transaction value in terms of section 15. What is the value you declare in the shipping bill will depend upon the terms and conditions. It could be an FOB value, it could be a CAF value. Uh, there could be a difference between the export value in the IGST invoice vis-a-vis -vis the export invoice. There could be reasons for that. So there are no straitjacket answers here. Only thing is that what we will say is what is the value to be captured in the invoices as per the value in terms of the IGST Act, Red with CGST Act. The shipping bill value could differ and uh, it could differ for very valid reasons. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, we have turn off more than 20 crore, but it to migrate to e invoicing. Do we have to issue e invoices for the dispatch already done until now on GST invoices or we can generate invoices from onwards? Thanks for clarification. As yeah. my knowledge goes, I think you can generate e invoices now also for the previous transactions. The limit cap has not been done to that. And uh, you, have, you can generate for the previous uh, last uh, 17 days. And now also you can, you can start generating it. Next, how to calculate distance to and from? I think that has been given on the tool itself. That will calculate. HSN percentage, if wrongly entered 12% instead of 18 it is allowed. But you should not pop up required. I think uh, I request but sir to answer. I think validation issue pertain to this. I HS, HSN, if wrongly entered 12 instead of 18, it is allowed, but it should not allowed pop up. No, because you see HSN, whatever the business you are doing, system is not going to say that this HSN is going to be sold at this rate. It is independent, rate is independent, HSN are independent. As you are doing currently a business, what you are issuing the manual invoices or the ERP system, you continue on that. The, what you have entered should be entered on the e invoice. That's all. We are not validating for this HSN. This only the rate should be there. Because some multiple one HSN may have a multiple rate also. We are not going into that detail. So subsequently it will be taken care. Thank you, sir. What is the time limit to issue e invoice? Actually, Already it has been answered. Clear. Sir, audio, okay, leave it. Whether we can draw the invoice without software directly from the site, whether we can draw the invoice without software, yeah, that the tools have already been explained. That can be done. Means only you have to upload the JSON file to the IRP portal to generate the invoice. And uh, invoice is generated due to technical error. Iron was not saved or visible. Now, how to print the iron and e invoice? But, sir. Uh, e invoice is generated due to technical error, IRN not saved and visible. Now, how to print the I IRN and e invoice? If you are using a a uh, API system, when you send once again, system will give back the IRN number. It will say already I e invoice has been generated, duplicate IRN number it will give. Based on the duplicate IRN number, you can again hit and get that complete signed invoice with a QR code and store it in your system. If you are in the bulk mode, you go to the MIS mode, MIS report, and you can see that what has been generated, which you have not saved, that detail will be provided in a MIS report. Thank you, sir. Whether we require to generate e invoice and LU to shipment, yes, you have to generate if you are uh, uh, enabled for that particular uh, e invoicing. 
Sir, could you please mute? Okay, sir, lot of disturbance. Yeah. Do we require to generate e invoice in every moment of cargo till it reaches to seaport or airport? For example, if despite the cargo from factory and due to breakdown, we keep kept the cargo in nearby warehouse. Later, we move the cargo from warehouse to seaport or airport. Do we need to generate iron only once or every time we move the cargo from one place or another in between till it reaches the port? I think it is not required. One e invoice generation is enough. I think only extension of our valid uh, the time is required, which the e bill which have to be done, but for e-invoice, multiple e-invoice generation is not required. This is my understanding. I request Zero Sir to throw light on that. I think that is correct. Uh, each time he has to update the e bills only. Thank you, sir. Next one. Uh, next one, please. Move, move again. I think... Uh, there are not much of uh, questions are there. Already we have uh, answered uh, quite a number of question and answers. In addition to the, I think this, what is the time required to generate multiple EV bills against one invoice of our cargo dispatch that has already been answered. And if turnover is taxable goods only, and like then. See, this is one another question one should be understand. If the 20 crore and above is aggregate turnover, please note, which includes even exempted turnover, export turnover, and also taxable turnover. Everything will get included. And one has to generate if they are crossing more than 20 crore and above. Just to say example, with a petrol and diesel uh, uh, vendor who is having non-GST sales, which are more all exempted, whereas only some lubricant sales are there, which is taxable. In such cases, for all taxable goods, he has to raise, which is a B2B transaction, he has to raise e invoices for non GST. There's no need to require raising e invoice, e invoice on that transactions. Only for GST transactions, they have to raise. Who will generate EV bill on job work and what value on job work value that has been already answered? Okay. While taking invoice at the second marine changes, virtual details mismatch with QR code. Already we have cleared that. Yeah. Next, while services given to Bangladesh, but they made the payment to INR instead of USD. So my question number, will we need to issue invoice under export category or local invoice under B2C category? See, Bangladesh is being a foreign country. You have to raise it in an export category only. It is not a B2C category. And a job work, if EV bill generated by factory, then it is mandatory to export to generate EV bill of export value also. That has been answered already. Next, any... Okay, next, next, please. Yeah, is there a bulk search of applicability invoices? All the vendors do just their complaints. No, no, already as sir has explained, uh, the overall enabled for the uh, generation of it is being provided in the tools. One can look in and they can find out who are all uh, eligible for, uh, they're enabled for uh, invoice generation. Next. From well, generating e invoice in tally, I think the, the you people should ask the tally prime only. Uh, I think we can't answer that question, we are not aware of we don't know what actually the software mechanism in that. We are cattle feeder traders, our sales are dairy farmers, most of the goods are under zero percent GST mostly. Bill of supply arise. Do I raise the invoice of bill of supply? Please remember for B2C transaction. If it is a B2C transaction, there's no need to raise any e invoices. Only for B2B transactions, even if zero percent is also a rate of tax. So you have to raise e invoices. Next, please. Okay, next. One second. Yeah, there is no provision to add additional information like bank details, work order details, etc. in the e-invoice generation because then we can issue manual invoice with e-invoice. Already Butcher and other uh, speakers have spoken about it. There are uh, beyond scheme also as quite good amount of options are available in the particular formats of bulk upload or API. I request this tax space to look into that particular any query they can raise onto the GSTN and that uh, ticket they can raise and they can get the clarity. 
as if no there's nothing to clarify on that it, all the issues are very clear on that Next, good. While uploading the e invoice by mistake, invoice is made in the name of two different parties. Bill to one party, ship to another party. Within their GST numbers, 21st have been passed, so can't cancel IRN. Now, what to do? I request uh, Dirats or, or Butser to answer this. Just show the question again. Yeah. That's also bill to ship to one party, ship to another party, they have raised. Yeah. Mistake may have made two different parties, maybe ship two parties. If the invoice is. The question once again. Uh, by uploading e invoice by mistake, e invoice is made in the name of two different parties. Bill to one party, ship to another party. With their GST numbers, 24 hours have been passed. So, can't cancel IRN. Now, what to do? Now, you have to go to GSTR1 and then show it as cancelled and then. Uh... That would be the problem. That would be the solution. Okay. One more query. There are certain invoices which are cancelled from our site. Also appearing as cancelled in the Excel sheet generated by website. Still appear in B2B tile while filing GST one Did it, sir? Mm -hmm. No, I think uh, for this, a ticket can be locked at the GSTN portal and we'll examine as to why it is happening. Yeah. Even if that is, one second, uh, can you come back to that question, please? Yeah. Even if this is uh, GSTN, uh, please raise the ticket to the GSTN portal as uh, Sir said. If it is not uh, solved, once again, you can raise that particular uh, issue through your uh, nodal offices of the particular state. And we'll try to resolve that uh, kind of any queries if it is unresolved in the ticketing. Next one, please. I think uh, most of the questions we have uh, answered. Yeah, next one. I think uh, electroplating and metal finishes. We are doing service job work. Now we're using SAC code for e invoice, but we generate EV bill. What code for making EV bill? Our SEC code is 9989. Kindly help how to make SEC code in EVA bill. No, EVA bill is required for the goods movement, not for a service. If you are issuing only a service, there is a clarification issued by the law, uh, GST Council also, uh, uh, law committee also. For service, EVA bill is not required. If with the service you are having the goods also, then EVA bill is required. So, yes, service, yes. EVA bill is not required. In this case, if the goods are moving, then they will have to fill the HSN of the goods, not, uh, not the service. Yeah, next please. Just for everybody, these all the queries, uh, I mean, all these FAQs are there in the portal, e-invoice1.gst.gov.in, same PPT on the PDF, everything will be available. And we are keep on adding the FAQs as and when the new questions are coming. You can go through that and see all the videos and FAQs and PDF, everything on that portal. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I think a lot of questions have come. Uh, what I would request, uh, uh, Murli Krishna, kindly Sir. compile all these questions, whatever has come as it is, uh, whatever has been communicated, send it to uh, the uh, mail ID of uh, uh, member GST CBIC. Uh, if possible, by segregating what has to be responded by the NIC, what has to be responded by the GSTN, and what has to be responded by the GST policy wing, uh, each one of us will work together further on this and uh, a direct outcome of that will be, I think probably we will transfer it back after our comments to Mr. Uh, Butt and to your team 
So the FAQs can be revised wherever you feel there are large number of gaps in understanding uh, for the benefit of the larger group. I think certainly a workshop of this nature would have helped us in uh, identifying a few more questions or areas of concerns where clarification will be required. All the three wings, ESTN, uh, NIC, as well as uh, the CBIC policy wing, uh, we will sit together and work on these queries and uh, give the feedback to Mr. Butt for uh, updating his FAQs. Thank you. Sir, thank you, sir. I think uh, we are come to, uh, come to a uh, closing session and I should really uh, place it and record the work done by CBAC uh, and uh, come in tax department across the country. And now today's presentation by NIC Karnataka and also the uh, member uh, CB, uh, the uh, policy wing of uh, CBAC and uh, Dira Rastogi right from, um, from the GSTN. And everyone has contributed uh, immensely. And I think hope uh, the all the taxpayers and stakeholders could able to get the clarity of this. And uh, really, it was a very good session. Not that we are moderating, we are conducting it. And it's a very good concept uh, thought about by the uh, CBS member, sir, uh, DPN, sir, and the uh, but sir. And we could able to propagate to the each and every taxpayers across the country. And there's a well uh, participation. More than 1,000 people were participated. And many are on YouTube earlier. And now, the uh, after getting more of clarification, most of the participants have exited. It's really heartening to see to that. Even now, there are 800 participants still that are listening to all of our uh, discussions, conversations. As Sir said, we're going to compile all the questions in a format. And uh, whatever to be flagged to the uh, GST, whatever to the NIC, whatever flag to the CBAC policy, team, we'll certainly will make it up, sir. We'll uh, rise to the occasions of. And uh, before uh, ending uh, this particular, I should place it record. Thank you each and every taxpayer. We have come on board and we have participated. Already, most of the taxpayers already are generating the invoices who are enabled more than 20 crore and above. This goes a very long way and make the compliance more simpler and easier. And ease of doing this is need of the art. And in days to the come, my gut feeling is that e invoicing becomes mandatory or optional or mandatory for each and every transaction days to come. We let so far that to happen, so to make our uh, economy more vibrant and make our ease of doing business to taxpayers and less make the better complaints and the less complaints on filing of different uh, formats. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.